Hi, I'm Jesse Dillon. This is my co-host, Priscilla. Hi. Today, uh, Jesse and I are going to be talking with the aging expert from the Milken Institute, Paul Irving. We're going to talk about who gets to live longer, about a world where the average age is getting a lot older. We're also going to talk about the battle to overcome ageism. And the upside of aging. Talk to me about that as well. But first, subscribe to our YouTube channel to watch this and more episodes, or subscribe to Jesse's Office wherever you stream your podcasts. Please feel free to leave comments and reviews. He'll try to respond whenever he can. I'm good. How are you doing? Good. Thank you for doing this. Can I just ask sure. you why you put the yellow sugar, the fake sugar? We're going to be talking about living forever, and like that is just poison. It's, po- it's, it's, it's poison, but the other stuff is poison too. So right. if, you, if you have, if you have uh, the only three parent, the only three grandparents, you know anything about who had type two diabetes? If you have two parents who have type two diabetes, if you have, if you're, if you're thin and you still have borderline high, yeah, sugar, sugar, and H one C, and H one C. You, you at least don't. You, you, you got to pick your poison, right? So the answer is, is oh, this, okay. it's probably less poisonous for me than than the other stuff. So yeah. you're giving us a little insight into you, right? Because that are you saying we're not going to talk about yeah. my? Oh sure. my goodness! Was no, that we don't good? want to talk about that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, um, yeah, I, I, I'm definitely not a nutty eater. In fact, to the to the contrary. But I guess my point is, is, is if I can have a choice between having a chocolate chip cookie this week or having phony sugar in my coffee, I'll take phony sugar in my coffee. So Japan, like you see the population of Japan is decreasing. And one of the problems that we don't, you know, it's come up at Milken before is this problem of depopulation. Is that necessarily a bad thing in in potentially an overpopulated world? I mean, I guess the the question... There's no question that the composition of populations is going to change dramatically. Right. I, always, I always say to say we're, the, the world is going to look look much older. Right. By the way, by the end of this century, the whole world will look will look older. But between now and mid century, virtually every place that most of us travel to, other than sub Saharan Africa and a little pocket in India, will will look much older. So so yes, maybe you you remember the population bomb? Yeah. So may so the answer is is a smaller population maybe in our future with with not only not only increasing longevity but low but well, very why? low birth rates. Why? Why? Well, that's because education. Well, they attribute no, no, education well, why, and why, empowerment. But why low birth? Why? why low birth rates? Yeah. Why low? Like I mean, with. Why? I have a theory. I have a theory, but but uh, so there, there's lots of speculation about it. My my theory is the single most important. There are lots of so obviously much lower ch- child mortality rates, uh, much larger urban, urban populations, not rural populations. So so people in rural areas tended to have lots of kids to service the farm and things like that. My own my own guess is that it's significantly related to the advancement of women across across mm-hmm. the world because. Um, women are smart. Women don't want to be tied down to to a, to a dozen kids. They recognize the they recognize the reality, which is still in many ways a sad reality that they tend to be disproportionately burdened with child child rearing, and it, and it impedes career advancement. Right. In fact, in fact, almost paradoxically. Uh, things are now happening kind of on the on the other end. So so having kids, in addition to lots of bad cultural norms, uh, impeded the progression of women for for obviously for for decades for most of most of history. But but now what we find is care, caregiving does the same kind of thing. So the estimates are more than two thirds of caregivers are, are are women. So there's nothing worse. You know, I think about my old profession, where you know I've worked in, in a progressive law firm. But the reality is, is that while well, we tried to figure out ways people could go on and off track and all the rest, you know, have kids, and uh, it's 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 incredibly diff- difficult. And and the bottom line is 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 it affects advancement. Look, China is the perfect example. China's reversed the one-child policy, and and it hasn't had much effect yet. Right. I think the the reasons are pretty simple. They change culture, and if you're a young couple in 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 China, first of all, there's also a, sh- a shortage of of women. 
right. interestingly. But, yeah. but, but um, if you're a young couple in China and, you're, and your decision is, is, should I buy a, a condo in Shanghai and, or should I have another kid? And by the way, and should I give my one kid right. violin lessons, college prep, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It, the, the decision's kind of logical. We, we, we don't either incent or reward or support uh, childbirth or child rearing in this, uh, in this country. And, 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 and frankly, although the, the U.S. is kind of well behind on this front in much of the world. You know, there's <coughs> these communities around the world where people are age, getting very, very old, you know, and we don't necessarily know why. I mean, the blue, the blue zones? Yeah, the, the, the Dan blue zones. The Dan yeah. Buettner stuff. Explain what it is for people who don't know what the blue zone is, because some people don't know. So blue zones are places that... <coughs> that um, are we being ta- are we taping? Oh gosh, yeah, no. we've been taping for hours. Just no. so don't worry. Oh, right. <laughs> okay, Blue, blues blues. <laughs> <laughs> this is why well, don't think you about know. it. You Come know, on, think about no, 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 no. But, uh, so, um, so Dan, Dan did a piece for National Geographic years years ago, Dan which is who, wait, Dan, Dan Dan Butner, yeah. who's who's the who's the the who coined blue zones. Um, <laughs> So what he did is he traveled around and he identified these these s- small places in the world where for some reason people live extraordinarily long lives relative to the rest of the population. And they include places like Okinawa and Sardinia. And there is actually one blue zone in the United States, which which is Loma Linda, California, which which is a whole different explanation. It out out east of out east of us, kind of really, really interesting place. Um so, so you know, he's kind of tried to figure out, you know, what are these, what do these places have in common? And they're not identical, not identical, but look, heavily plant-based diets, uh, very strong family family units that that you know families live together, they work together, they operate together, and engage together. Physical work, right? Going up in the hills with the sheep, coming right. down from the yeah. hills with the, with the sheep, right. a strong sense of of, of community, sense sense of pr- a purpose, me- meaning re- obviously respect for elders. We 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 live in a society that that demeans in many many ways old people. That's that's ages. These are societies in which older people are are venerated, are are still considered wise wise elders. In the case of Loma Linda, it's it's a really interesting place because it's principally a Seventh Day Adventist community. Mm-hmm. So right. so what does Loma Linda have? Loma Linda has big families, low divorce rates, a principally plant based diet, no booze, no no coffee. By the way, a very good health system. You know, Loma Linda University and the ho- the hospital out there is, is is a very good hospital. So they have this kind of interesting mix. So the, I think the thing that's interesting about blue zones, because we're not move, you know, I'm not moving to Okinawa, nor are you, uh, is is what are the things that we can derive yeah, what from can the, from these yeah. places and somehow apply yeah. in our own lives. Our lives. And by the way, uh, you know, most of it's intuitive. That's that's the interesting thing about healthy healthy aging, healthy yeah. longevity. We kind of know what the right thing is yeah. to do. Right. It's behavioral economics, right? Yeah. It's so. So the question is, how do, how we, do we do it? How right? do we do it? How do we incent it? How right. do we how do we make it appealing? How do we make it a cultural norm? When we start to think about you know aging, it's like you know. It's not just surviving till the end of life. It's like leading your best life. So how do you how do you think about that? I say to my economist friends. So so uh, if uh, if anybody took you know uh, macro and my and my and micro, you know, let me let me ask the the following question: If there if there is less of a commodity of a desirable commodity, what happens to its value? Becomes more valuable. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Go, How come go. you got the answer? And Become, I didn't. Becomes. I had to think about it. Be, becomes becomes more 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 valuable. So so why why does that kind of obvious rule of of nature in many respects certainly rule of rule of economics fail when it comes to the single most valuable thing that we have in our lives, which is time. Right. Right. So why does time become less valuable as as we get old? It's a paradox. Right. Um, and I, I think, again, some of that it relates to cultural norms and expectations. Some of it certainly relates to physical decline and, and, and the, the risks, although, you know, 
Uh, a third, roughly a third of people over 85 have Alzheimer's or some other form of dementia. That right. means two thirds don't. Yeah, we talk right. a lot about the one third that do when we should. It's, you know, it's, it's tragic. It's something that needs a lot of attention, a lot of money, a lot of research, medical research and, and, and intervention. But that means two thirds don't. So, you know, we have this thing that says that, that, that as we get older, our lives become less valuable. I, I sometimes think of it that this, it should be like a marathon, right? Life is in many ways like, like a marathon. So right. what happens if, if you're a distance runner? You know, you, you hit a wall at uh, 17, 18, 19 miles. Always 21 you, miles for you, me. 21 mile miles. 21. So you, you've done Twice. it. So, you, so you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah. You fight through the wall. Yeah. You fight through the wall because you know, you know, yeah. God damn it, you're gonna finish. Yeah, you go. the, you're gonna go. finish this this thing. You've gotten that. You've gotten that far. Yeah. And then what happens toward the end of a race? What happens typically the, at the end, not only of a marathon, but the end of, let's say, ten thousand meters or something like that for for an for an elite runner? What does an elite runner do at the end of a race? They push through and then they collapse. What's it called? Kick. I don't know. Kick. Are you a runner? The kick. The kick. Right. Bad. Yeah. Um, so 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 at the end of it a race, k- at the end of a race, right. you don't slow down. You speed you up. Kick, right? yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So 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 my notion is is how do you think about life course in a way that values right that that as time becomes less, it becomes more valuable, yeah. more meaningful, more important. That we don't slow down, we actually speed well, up. It's, uh, we speed up in, in different ways, right? We're not going. We're not going to physically speed right. up. There are things. There are things. You know, where, where you can't be naive about the realities of aging, but there are things that we can. We can certainly do. Did you have a mentor or somebody when you were younger, much younger, where you looked up to that, that sort of put you on this path, or you saw things that, that had meaning for you? No, it's. I mean, other than, than parents. Um, I mean, I was always, I think, lucky in 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 business. In business, you know, uh, I, I think for all of us, mentors mentors are are important. You know, you and I went went to the same school, my friend. I don't know if you remember. Wait a minute, that. are you guys? Wait, we're, we're both NYU film school. Right. Oh, he's a so so yeah. so. <laughs> I didn't stay very long. He dropped out. I guess he's a dropout. I I stayed. You went to I, film school yeah. too. I yeah. I, yeah. I, I, I stayed. I stayed in a and and then, and I graduated. Nice. And I remember, you know, Hague Mnugin. I was sure. Hague was Hague the dean yeah. when you were there. Yeah. You know. <laughs> when my life was kind of a mess and I was flat broke and living in a you know in a cockroach infested you know walk up sure. with, with with no dough and trying to figure out you know how I was going to survive I you know so you know older adults have been helpful to me in in various ways throughout my life. Um, how did you get from film school to what you do now? Oh, it's you know, the Center for Aging. <laughs> you know, it's like it doesn't seem like a direct line. I well, I, I were. <laughs> you know, it's it's I, I I'm the quintess- quintessential example of failing up. You know, I worked in the I worked in the movie business for a couple. of I worked wait, on TV what? for a short period of time. Wait, I worked wait, in the wait, movie wait, business wait, for. Like, what were you doing as a producer, or writer? No, I, I worked. I, I actor. It, it, it was it was funny in my film school class, uh, which was in a tough time in New York City, tough time in the business, and of course. You remember what we used to demean. Sure. Now I spent a lot of time on the USC campus, and I know what a, what a really good film school it is, yeah. and an amazing facility in all the rest. But we used to demean those, you know, like commercial guys out, yeah. on, out on the West Coast. So all my all my friends who graduated with me were starving. Right. Um, you know they they were doing they were doing industrials. They were doing like little failing sure. documentaries. They were doing in those days porno flicks. Right. You know because right. people were film. You know whatever yeah. whatever they could do absolutely to, whatever they could do to make to make a make a, a living. I got a job at ABC TV doing yeah. doing promotion. Right, right. <laughs> you know, and then I then I went to work at United Artists for a few years, and then and then uh, I just then then I went to law school, and that was kind of the end okay, of that. That's yeah. how usually and then I end up running a. Lo- a law firm with a big entertainment practice. So yeah, yeah, but that's what I did most of my but, life. But uh, I, I want to go back to something you said. You know, yeah. first of all, how do we get into the ageism culture? Why, why do you think in this country, particularly, there is not a, a regard? Is it a Hollywood problem? You know, we we focus on youth and it beauty. Sure is. Like, are we part of the problem? Or yeah. people in Hollywood? Yeah, yeah. What is? Yeah. Where does that come from? It's well, it comes from a lot from a lot of things. It comes from just this this general notion that that retirement and disengagement and decline are just an inevitable part of of getting old. That right. what getting old means is disease, diminishment. You are less. Uh, it relates to f- very much to physicality. By the by, the way, I think I think it 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 it's particularly a tragedy for 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 women. 
right? Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, I'm I'm like the anti hair hair dye guy, the uh, the the uh, stop cosmetic surgery per- person, but but so I think I think you know. Uh, I'm a little, you know, as I often say it, I don't know, Jesse, whether you feel the same way. So, so even me, who so believes in the va- in the value of, of older adults and the fact that we have to get by these 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 biases, the reality is, is I look in the mirror and I look at my bald head, or I look at you know this. I'm older than you. We're looking yeah. at a thing that's flapping, right? Oh, um, so and, and and Mine. and 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 I and I have to, I have to fight. Yeah, I fight my own bias, right, my right. own bias about it. So, so um, one of the, one of the people on my academic and policy advisory board, who's who just does the world's most remarkable research, and she's she's terrible at promoting her own her own stuff, but but she just she just does brilliantly important work as a woman named Becca Levy at Yale, who has done this 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 really interesting research on the connection between principally self-image and yeah. self-image mm-hmm. and kind of the the impact of cultural norms on on health. Yeah. And she's the one I know you may have read this in something something I wrote. So she's the one who 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 said that that for people who have positive feelings about this manifested in ways that she obviously describes in her research but having a fundamentally positive view of aging versus this fundamentally negative, depressed, down, mm-hmm. right. diminished view right. of aging. In her study, live on average 7.5 years longer, wow. a more significant variable than body mass index, smoking, or exercise. So, so Feeling positive so about feeling, yourself. So, ha- you know, so, so being able to look in the mirror and say, yeah, like I'm you know, o- enjoying or... I'm, I'm o- I, I feel a sense I, I of purpose. Good. I feel yes. a sense of meaning, right. in, meaning in my life. There's a woman named Patricia Boyle at Rush Medical Center in Chicago who's done really interesting uh, work on, on, again, this connection between purpose, purpose yeah. and, and health. Yeah. Right. And what she's found is impacts on cardiovascular disease, pulmonary dis- dis- disease, dement- dementia, deferral of, all, of the symptoms of all, not, not disease cure, but right. deferral of symptoms. Right. This is incredibly powerful stuff. Yeah. Um, another person on my, on my um, academic board is a woman named Linda Freed, who's the dean of the, you may have heard of her, she's the dean of the um, School of Public Health at Columbia, the Mailman School of Public mm-hmm. Health, and she's a geriatrician. And, and she said, you know, years ago when she was actually doing clinical work, she would, sh- she would say to people during the course of their, you know, annual check- checkups, uh, not just you know how's your how's your sugar and let's take blood and urine and and poke around. Uh, are you volunteering? Do you feel a sense of, of of that your life is 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 important? Are you are you working? These these are things that directly and directly to your health. And again, intuitive. I think in many ways, right? Although many of not- us are afraid. I'm I'm afraid of the notion of spending the last ten or fifteen years of my life playing shuffleboard. Right. Me too. But you, would, terrified. but you would never do that. I mean, the I thing is, is that you must. you have a sense of purpose. Question is. How do you impart that to somebody it's, and say you want to? It's 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 very hard, and obviously it, it's dramatically affected by education levels, right. wealth levels, right. access, yeah. information. Right. I you mean, know, when the, we the, talk about aging, you know, are we just talking about wealthy people yeah. aging? And we're, well, that's so. I'm, I'm so glad you asked that because because the so the 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 bias, the expectation out there when people talk about longevity is lives have gotten longer. The truth matter is they haven't gotten longer right. for, for, for many for many people. For, and that's why that's why averages, you know, lies down lies in statistics, right? A- averages are really completely misleading. Right. Uh, for those of us who were lucky enough to have been born right and educated right yeah. and and who live, you know, the right kinds of lifestyles and and, and, and have all access that, to the right access foods access, this, access, yeah, all access that to stuff. good to good to yeah. good health. The prospects for living, you know, these days into our nineties is 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 pretty high, and the prospects for kids living to hundred is is pretty good. Uh, but for a significant portion of the population, lives haven't gotten longer at all. And in fact, we know in the in the U.S. in the last three years, average longevity has actually gone down. Yeah. Why? Yep. A result of opioid abuse and gun violence and, and suicide and and his, historically high levels of obesity and terrible nutrition and bad access to, to health. You know, I sometimes say, you know, the, we hear all the time you – you guys have heard many times. I know Jesse, you know, because because your interest in in medical research and all the rest. We have the best 
bioscience in, in, in the world. We have the, uh, the best academic, which we do, the best academic inst institutions in, in the world, extraordinary knowledge about, bi about biology, uh, the finest doctors in, in, in the world, and yet our, our outcomes, you hear this all the time, our outcomes are terrible relative to our, to our peer countries. Again, th this is the problem with, with averages. So the outcome for the three of us the outcomes for the three of us are probably just about as good as the outcomes for our counterparts in Norway sure. or a lot of other really, really fabulous places. Across, if, we were, if we were doing this today in Compton, uh, the outcomes are about as good as, as, as uh, some, some countries in poor, very poor countries in West Africa. So, right. so, um, so, so the real challenge, whether whether it's it's a question of purpose or a question of health or a question of opportunity for work and all the rest, is democratization, and and that's you know this is to me a, a question of core values. This is why I fight with my colleagues about our nonpartisan um, stance, because I think we're at a time in history where we got to kind of stand up and and um, and and. You know, talk about core. What do we believe? Yes. Core value. Do we believe that health is health is a is right? It, do we yes. believe right. education Absolutely. is a right? Do yeah. we believe that that these opportunities to cap? I I wrote a piece, which you guys might be interested in reading, on longevity and inequality, and I I said I thought it was was the the the, the greatest in, injustice. We talk a lot about income inequality. That's yeah. one component of longevity sure. inequality. Yeah. But yeah. what what's more tragic? Than, than people in one in one zip code that, in one right. part of town sure. uh, living ten to twenty years longer than another person yeah. being able to spend time with their kids and in work. So that's one side, you know, the fundamental human right of people who are aging to just to even to age, right? Yeah. The other part of it is, I mean, the other thing to consider is just the. You know, what do you make of the Silicon Valley ideology where we're going to live forever? You know, that, that we're, right. we're here, we're going to live AI. forever. If we just get the science right, it's, everything's going to be great, you know? Yeah, it's lovely. You know, yeah. I've, <laughs> I mean, the I, Aubrey de Grey, with, if, we with, just, right. if we could just yeah, without, figure yeah. it out. Our kids know? are going to live to 200. Yeah, uh, yeah I, I'm... I, Lo, you know, over the long term, science does a lot of amazing things, and and disruption happens, and things don't move in a linear way, yeah. right? Look, uh, I, I sat at a meeting a couple of years ago in which there was I won't name the company, but there was somebody from, you know, PhD from Stanford, really smart, who who was who was sitting in a room with with a, with a bunch of other people, and we were all talking about the challenges of aging and longevity and messaging and ageism and. Uh, and in questions of justice and all the rest. And he basically said, after a fair amount of warm up, that we were looking at all this with such a 20th century, yeah. you know, 20th century yeah. frame, and that ultimately that they would be able to code what we might think of as the soul. Right. And that therefore, all, you know, our bod bodies, replaceable parts, all that stuff is just kind of transitory. So, you know, all the cool kind of bioengineering that'll right. go by the wayside. And, uh, we don't. We won't need to have have children anymore. But to the extent we do, you know, you'll be able to. You'll maybe you'll be in a hologram, or you'll be on a screen communicating with your three. <laughs> right. Right. Okay, great, great, great. <laughs> it's and, like and, all the. It's like all the people who want to go to Mars. It's like right. let's let them go. You let know? them go. You yeah. know, or so so. My attitude about all this is 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 great. You know, but. Uh, uh, I'd, what I'd like to do with that person is is drive him down to Skid Row in L.A. and say, "What are you going to do tonight?" You know, right. uh, and and uh, and when it comes to 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 older adults and this notion of 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 not only how to create better better longer lives for this generation but for the next generation, I say, "Great, if you can solve it all, Mazel Tov." Zygazunt, yeah. <laughs> go with God, yeah. do whatever, do what, do do whatever, do whatever you can. In the meantime, we actually have work to do. So, how do you see your role today? Like, how how do you see what you're doing? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I have another question. I, I don't know. You know, I, look, uh, you know, we're. We're, uh, for, first of all, remember, the Milken Institute is one of a portfolio of, of things sure. I do. So I do different things in different places. At the Milken Institute, what we, what we basically do is three things. We do applied research. We convene 
we do communications. We don't do communications as well yeah. as, as, as well as you do at one rose, yeah. but we try. Yeah. Um, so but I've always thought that that convening part is really special. At the, Milken, the convening you know? part is powerful because we, we connect uh, business leaders yeah. and investors with, with academics and policy leaders and, and, and others. We bring people together across the wealth spectrum, across, across gender, across race, uh, very much across, across country. And they, and they learn from each other right now. I, I'm actually planning a big, a big, uh, a series of sessions in, in Singapore right. next year where, where age, aging is just the hottest topic in the world in, in, in Asia. In a positive so, way? I mean, is it, are they feeling... So pol policy, very much policy lead, policy leadership yeah. thinking about changing changing retirement expectations. Yeah. Uh, Although they uh, have very different cultural ideas there. Right? So. You know, I wish that was as true as, really? as I think it used used to be. I, think, right. I, I often say that, that I, I got to be careful here, but I often say that the worst things that we've exported from the United States are to, to the East are a brand of fried chicken. Yeah. yeah. Ah. And, well, and, and, uh, I hope it's not a client of yours and, uh, and our, our attitudes about, about aging and old and older adults. So it's not as much, I, I there, there is this traditional notion of respect of elders, yeah. vener, veneration of, 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 of age, wisdom, ex experience. It's still, I think, more true there than it is in, in, the, in the U.S. and probably more true there than it is in Europe, but not as true there as it was traditionally. Do you, do you feel like it's, it's changing? I mean, do you feel like we're, we're, you know, we're starting to respect people more? I th no. But, <laughs> but no, I mean, I'm just, yeah. you know, I, so I may, I, I, I'm a hard grader. Uh, I I I feel like I feel like the good news is, is we're much more in conversation than we ever were be, right. be, before. So I, I think that these issues are, are are being elevated in ways that that I, I frankly couldn't have imagined even several years ago. If I just related to my to my own ex experience, uh, the yeah. exposures, the questions I get from places that I never would have gotten questions a few a few years ago. But but um, is it a lack of respect or is it a lack of understanding? Yeah, like how? Well, what I think, you, I, I'm not. Are those? I'm not sure that those well, two things are necessarily different. Just well, just, okay. You know, right? I guess what I'm saying is, is that you know, is when you're meeting people, do they, do they understand what the goal is? Do they, do they understand what a better life for all means? More profit for everybody, more better for everybody, or is it like oh, I just don't like old I, people and it doesn't matter? Yeah, I, I, th I think it's, I, actually people do like old old, yeah. old people. I mean, right. So so the answer is we all like our our grandparents, sure. right? If, if our grandparents are around. Um, it's just it's just that we we tend to like old people or we tend to view old people in one of two ways. By the way, maybe a preliminary question is what is old? Right. Yeah, right? Yes. Uh, what a, is a, old? A, well, AARP membership is is fifty plus. Yeah. yeah. When we have more sense. So you're more, old. And we have. I understand, but you know, here's the thing: the, the challenge of that is that people do not. Self-identify exactly. with AARP I, at a fifty plus, right. so they don't want to accept so the card. There was exactly a, there, so there was a conference in in LA last week that I spoke at called called uh, called YBL Your Best Life, put on by something called a the Ageist. Sure. Do, do you know about it? I, yeah. I do. So know a it's, it's bit. interesting because I'm often so I'm sixty seven. Mm -hmm. I'm 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 sometimes when I go to speak at uh, which I do try just to try to stay connected to go to speak at at a nursing home. I'm I'm. Sometimes the youngest person in the room. I may have been the oldest person in yeah. the room at, at this conference. It was filled with with hipsters and like cool looking people with tattoos and all and yeah. all the rest. And probably a lot of them were fifty, were your vintage, probably yeah. you know early fifties. Yeah. Uh, and um, and and the whole discussion was about was about markets and culture, right. and it was it was great and energizing and exciting. So so look. Older adults, in whatever way you define it, are are as diverse. I actually think more diverse than any other part of the part of the population. So the notion of, you know, how do you treat an old person, or how should you think about an old person, is just as absurd as saying how should you think about a man or a woman, or 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 somebody who's Latino or black. It's just crazy. When right? you go to the retirement home, is the experience for you different than when you're going to that conference and speaking? Sure it is. Um, so so people have different have different attitudes about that about their own aging, and they're struggling with different things. Right. The, the, the fifty something might be struggling with this question of my changing looks, 
uh, are, am I on the decline? Because if you think of traditional notions of, of life course, the traditional notion of a life course was, you know, child, fun in childhood, education, coupling, children, peaking something, you know, sometime right around Jesse's age. Yeah. And then starting this long, inexorable decline right. to, to death, right? right? That was that was kind of the traditional right. view of, of 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 life. And now there's recognition that life is, for those of us who are lucky enough, again, yeah. life is lifelong learning. It's yes. spurts, yes. spurts of learning. It's right. spurts of relationships. It's spurts of jobs, of, 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 jobs, of, yeah. di of different work that that occur throughout life. Yeah. Many of those older people haven't experienced that. They still they still kind of have it. They have this sense that of they're decline, that they're the on, on, on the decline. And some of them some of them are. Again, we can't ignore the right. realities of of infirmity. Um, and that's again why I I, th I think we we can't look at old is some kind of you know homogeneous mass it just right. it just it just is isn't but i think the good news is is that is that the next generation of old are beginning to to fight the man you know yeah. they're be, mm -hmm. they're beginning to say well wait a minute i don't buy into this notion that that my next step is to is to move to some gated community in in florida which is age segregated sure uh, and and spending my time do, doing nothing but hanging out by the by the pool and going to my doctor and going to to an early dinner, at uh, or hanging out at the rec center waiting waiting to die. My my next stage is is uh, volunteerism, ongoing engagement. Maybe it's running for president. Who knows what we it, have what a it lot is. of people in there, you know, right? Seventies. You know, do we need to perhaps a a uh, colleges need to to have. Totally. Yeah. So I'm, Higher I'm, I'm, or really, I'm glad you I'm glad you ra you raised it. So so um, the 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 design of American colleges, very much by the way, driven by models of places like Harvard that opened its doors in 1636, um, uh, catered very understandably to to a young audience. Initially, by the way, a young male audience, right? A young young right. white male audience. So 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 um, so thankfully there have been bat battles to to open the doors of education for for women. Thankfully battles, although by the way we're nowhere near where we need to be, but battles to open the doors for for people of color. Uh, and the reality is, we need the same battles to ensure that people have access to education throughout throughout life. So we have these little continuing education programs, you know, glommed on to the side of, 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 of universities. They're, they, again, typically are, are age segregated. But why shouldn't a, right. why, why, why shouldn't it? somebody, you know, if Jesse Dillon decided tomorrow that as much as he loves his business at, at Wondros, he's decided he wants to become a scholar in Italian literature, sure. making it up, why shouldn't he be able to go, to go apply for a PhD program yeah. uh, and by the way, fight for, you know, get out, f fight for tenure, and probably have more years of scholarship than his young counterpart might have had two gener generations ago. And I guarantee you, if you did that, if you if you yeah. applied for that program and walked into to the Italian literature department if, to the extent that one exists today, yeah. maybe I should have said in his it's case. A different, maybe, maybe, yeah, I could yeah, study Divine Comedy. Maybe, I would maybe, love to do yeah. that. Maybe, or maybe divine Although you, you, could you could study Divine Comedy for years and not get any. Or maybe, maybe, I, maybe, maybe, maybe I, in your case, I, maybe I should have said bioscience. But, yeah. but, but, but the, point, the point is you, you'd be today way smarter than you were when you were 20. Well, how about sure. You'd be way more motivated. Yeah. You'd be driven like crazy. Yeah. Uh, you'd, you'd bring yeah, this you'd, lifetime yeah. of yeah. perspective, and judgment. You would, it's true, you You'd would. know how to, how to yeah. deal with things yeah. across sectors in new ways. So the answer is yes, universities... The other thing is universities have, have a business model problem, sure. right? Yeah. So this is not just a do good for the world thing. This is do good for the yeah, university thing. Open the door, yeah. open yeah, the doors to, to a broader community. But Embrace also them. think about a, a classroom though scenario because I, I, talking about the mentorship, talking about the interactions between, we don't see enough interaction between you know really the elderly or older and younger. So in a classroom, if you have a 20-year-old and a 30-year-old and yep. a 50-year-old, 
What happens to that dynamic? It's a, what, it's a, fab, it's a fabulous dynamic. You know, right. my, my friend, you, you know I, I chair the board of Encore.org, which is a wonderful organization focused on uh, connecting, connecting the generations and, and, and encouraging and enabling old people to principally to serve young people, to, yeah. to, to, mm. to do good through, through service. Uh, and my, my friend Mark Friedman talks all the time about how we become, uh, the most age segregated society in, in, in the world. What we know is that the interactions between young people and old people are powerful. They, they have complementary skills and complementary in, interests. Uh, young people benefit incredibly from the mentorship of, old, of older people. Older people benefit not just socially, but physically. We, yeah. we talked a little bit about yeah. it from, the, from engagement with, with younger people. It's, it's magic. Yeah, uh, and and it should be the norm in 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 businesses and education institutions and very much in communities. So so tackling age segregation, which I also frankly think, is one of the things that explains some of our politics. And my friends in the UK who are struggling with their own political battles, think that some of the some of the same thing is is true. And that is, you know, if you think about the interaction in the U.S. between uh, what Ron, uh, Ron Brownstein and my friend Fernando Torres Gill uh, called call the brown and the gray, the, 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 the aging white population in the United States and the, and the young population of, of color and, and the fact that there just is not enough yeah. engagement yeah. bumping into each other. The, there's understandable, although not justifiable, fear, anxiety yeah. ab about, about change. You know, if you think who are the, the two most prominent uh, old people in, in, well, in the, in the U.S. and in, in, in Great Britain, Donald Trump and Nigel Farage, right? <laughs> well, um, the queen. Right. Yeah. Uh, so really so uh, maybe the queen. Yeah, that's, that's the good part. The point is the notion of, of embrace, yeah. embrace, of, uh, embrace across, across right. culture can do so many things to heal the rifts in, in our yeah. society. So, again, this goes back to building institutions. So Jesse, Jesse asked about ac ac it's academic institutions, it's businesses, it's yeah. communities, it's everything. A lot of these things we talk about that we hear about every day, um, you know, AI, natural language processing, uh, robotics, the future of these things are going to play a part in aging. You know, we don't we think of them as separated, but don't they play a role? They already do play. Sure, a role. sure they play a role and and they can play, you know, you talked earlier about the about the the, the potential impacts of, you know, disruptive advances in bioscience and, and all the rest, but in the meantime, uh, there's a lot that that tech advances that AI and and other things can do to improve lives. You know, what we know is is that is that when the day comes when uh, when Uber, Uber and Lyft really do have autonomous uh, autonomous car, car services? That the that the notion of taking the keys away from mom and dad and disabling mm -hmm. their independence yeah. Yeah. are over. That's yeah. Yeah. That, that somebody is, took my keys. Well, away, that, that's, that's a, they that, should that, take yours. They but, probably yeah. should take yours away. But that, yeah. but that yeah. my son but that, wants to take but that, mine. Away. But, but <laughs> the point the point is that that's a beautiful thing. Now, I've, sure. I've, all, I've also yeah. written about the fact that that it. Just just enabling people to take advantage of autonomous cars is, is, is not just an exciting yeah. prospect. We have to ensure that homes and the places where they go yeah. are age friendly sure. and, and enable well, access. Right, uh, but that's just one. That's one example. Te you know, teledocs. Yeah. Um, there are issues with so with social media, right? I mean, there there's there's some research that suggests that people that spend more than a couple hours a, uh, hours a day on, on social media actually report as lonelier. Yes. But yeah. but but certainly, there, I think there are opportunities. Social media, uh, the, the leaders in social media, fa Facebook, Google, and, and others have opp the opportunity to yeah. think through connectors. It's about being yeah connected. to think through how they can become more yeah. more effective connectors. That could be incredibly powerful, not just again with grandkids, yeah. but and, you know, right. but, but with. Working, well, it's a huge uh, working. problem to solve loneliness. Yeah. You know, it's a big problem to solve. And huge. what? But for you, you know, upsides of aging. Yeah. But we have a few minutes left. What are they? I mean, and you must spend a lot of time talking to people, and really, I don't know when you go around and in your work, do you also really work with people in their eighties and their nineties? And what's 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 good? What are they excited about? You don't put the happiness curve. Have you ever heard of the happiness yeah, curve? Right. So, so kind of kind of work of positive psychology, which basically says the happiest times in life. Are are when we're 
when we're young and when we're old. It's the time in the middle when we when we're dealing with kids and all the, all the, all the com, all the complexity that that uh, that creates you know the the most difficulties. So so old I think older age in whatever way it's defined should become the most meaningful time of life. It's the time when you're direct, when you have when you've developed filters and and maybe the honesty to to say yes. what you really want and yes. what you really don't want. To use your time in ways that are really meaningful to you, not dictated yeah. by. Uh, professional expectations or societal expectations or educational or familial expectations or whatever, but on what's really important, what really matters. It's the time, it's the time to build legacy. It's the time for what's, for what's important. Uh, I always say to people, again, there may be some people in leadership who never got this message, uh, <laughs> but, but, I, but I always say to people that I think most of us heard something from our parents that went something like this, different words, Leave the world a better place than you found it. Right. Most most of us heard, heard that this is the time of life in which we can think about how to how to do that. Doesn't mean, by the way, it's not a challenge, but uh, this is the time of life to to think about how we can how make, we make contributions, not just to to better our own lives, but to to the next generation. Uh, uh, people talk about the joy of grandparenting. I'm not there yet, but. Hope Springs, it's, uh, we, I got a fantastic daughter-in-law, and if she's listening, <laughs> <laughs> my son and daughter, they know, we're nudging. Uh, um, and by the way, you know the reason why grandparents and grandchildren get along so well, why? don't you? Why? Common enemy. Uh, Wait, what was that? Common the reason enemy. why common grandchildren, enemy. common enemy. Very yeah. good joke. Uh, um, <laughs> so I think if, if, if society... Very much, by the way, people in your in your business. Yeah. If those who are who are influencers and culture creators, uh, filmmakers, writers, artists, and, and 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 others paint paint a more appealing and attractive picture of the possibilities of older age, yeah. I think em- employers and educational institutions are open to to uh, thinking about uh, age as part of the diversity and inclusion matrix, yeah. right? right? Not yeah. not just race, yeah. gender, sexuality, yeah. but age diversity as, as an asset. Right. Uh, I think if we can begin to tackle these questions of beauty and physical change, yeah. the notion that, that getting older doesn't mean you're less, it means you're different. Yeah. yeah. So I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful that, that change is here. But, you know, cha- look, culture change takes a long time. Right, yeah. Civil Rights Act of 1964 didn't end racism. The modern yeah. women's movement now, 45 years ago or yeah. so, right? Betty Friedan, et cetera, didn't create pay parity. We still don't have pay parity. Sure. Um, um, actually, actually, probably the movement that did, that that happened most rapidly and maybe most dramatic dramatically, and maybe there were a range of explanations for it was was the shift in attitudes and ideas about the LGBT mm-hmm. Q community, but but still still fighting battles. So it's it's going to be a while. We got to stay think, alive to fight the right. battle. Right. Uh, yeah. So we have to fight that fight, and I think you know I think what all of us should. You have kids. I, I don't. Sure. You have kid, you have kids. Kid, yeah. Okay. So so I think what all of us have to hope is is that when our kids are. 60, 70, 80, they see their their longer lives and they see their potential as just an incredible blessing yeah. and and um, and 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 an opportunity to do great and, and important things without the impediment of kind of the ageist notions that hopefully will will be long gone by that stage. Thank you Thank for coming you so in. Thank you so much. I'm happy we'll to talk to you this. in 20 years from now. <laughs> <laughs> I hope I'll be around. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that was great. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, guys. I didn't even know we were doing it. Yeah. I, I thought we were just warming up. No. Thanks for watching or listening. Don't forget to subscribe. Click here for the here. next episode. Here.